I could totally mm -hmm. strangle a man. I'd like that to be very, very clear. <laughs> Never doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, crime solvers, and welcome back, and welcome to our part two of the Hunt a Killer series on Board AF. We're glad that you're here. I hope you're having a very good day. If you enjoy these murder-solving uh, episodes that we've been doing, give this video a like. Do it. You. Maybe subscribe. Yeah. Let's get into it. You know what we're doing. We're solving a murder. If you haven't seen the first part of our Hunt a Killer series, go watch it. We're just as hot as we are right now. Essentially, it comes in boxes, and the boxes have evidence in them and papers. And it's mm -hmm. gonna be a lot of reading. Yep. And we're gonna try and figure out which of the nine suspects committed the murder of uh, Charlie. You know. Charlie. You oh, know good Charlie. Charlie. The first person we have is Arthur Hughes. Arthur Hughes organized the um, school reunion that they were all in town to attend when Charlie was murdered. He's real uptight. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about Arthur? I think I kind of suspect. I don't think it's too strong, but they did find the prescription in the backseat of Charlie's car. He seems on the verge. I personally feel like he may be a part of it like being used as like a pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be weird for a killer while like <laughs> kill someone and then like take their like anxiety med prescription out of their yeah. pocket. Yeah, and stash yeah. it in a little like no. it was in a little thing behind the scenes. It's seat. the alibi. It's it's instead of eating insanity. I just I I forgot my prescription. <laughs> I was a little too anxious. Aura McBride. Aura McBride is Charlie's cousin. Mm -hmm on uh, her mom's side. Aura has some unaccounted for time. She volunteered to help clean up at the end of the day, right. but no one necessarily saw her do that. Yeah, yeah. Aura is, is also the one that found the body. That's um, a big Called the police, the and then mm -hmm. there was a little bit that we thought kind of suspicious was the timing of the call. She called the police at like 10.52 right. or something, and then three minutes later, she called the group to say that he was dead, and it's like, okay, so you just got off the phone and then mm -hmm. called again. Yeah. A little weird in my opinion. Yeah, it was a little quick. Mm -hmm. I know, I'll agree, it was a little quick to the draw. Uh, <laughs> Antonio Villar. There's not as much about Antonio. They were, that was his childhood friend, right? Mm -hmm. They were real, real tight in high school. Yeah. We know that essentially he was rushing home to get to his son. You did um, some some of that forensics on the, um, oh, I believe. It yeah, was, you well, thought it was. I think it was Antonio maybe, that said he would he keep the, the business yearbook, alive. I believe so, yeah, who wrote oh. it in the black life. <laughs> you said that the, I believe the P was very specific or something like that, the yeah. S. There, there was a letter yeah, that was very specific. Wait, yeah. yeah, and there was the records of people mm -hmm. taking drugs mm -hmm. out and Antonio uh -huh. was constantly on that list, right? Yeah. yeah. And then there was also the checks Antonio sent between, I believe Antonio yeah. had the checks uh, between himself and Charlie. As well, Antonio <laughs> left <laughs> right. the party early to go see his son, but never, uh, he's got an hour of unaccounted time. Uh, Nicholas Matsukis, what's his deal? Uh, the son of the the two parents that owned the tavern mm -hmm. that was. Oh, he's right, also right, a right, neuroscientist. Right. Mm -hmm. We thought he was pretty suspect because he as well had missing time, mm -hmm. as in he was the last to arrive at the bar, as to our witnesses, but he claims that he was at the bar early, Ooh, drinking, and no one ran right. into him. And so, he also claimed that he wanted to try and catch up with Charlie at the end of the reunion and mm -hmm. waited back in the parking lot for a little bit, but didn't see him. Mm -hmm. He wanted to talk about something important, but no, nothing major. Mm -hmm. He's high on the suspect list. Yeah. We have Robin. Robin, Robin Dupree. Yeah. So Robin said that uh, she didn't really talk to Charlie much during the reunion. Uh, there was some time before they were all supposed to meet, so she went home to freshen up. Mm -hmm. She got to Dimitri's at a little past 10, uh, and that Gavin and Nita came in after her, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. We did uh, find in the yearbook that Robin dated Yes. Charlie, and that they broke up at some point, but that Robin was very much in love with Charlie. They have a very cute, um, like, little Lisa Frank paper love letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Robin is Charlie's uh, high school sweetheart. We thought there might have been possibly an affair, that that wasn't too strong, but the reason why we thought it is because we found the necklace and the yeah. ring. Yeah. The scratch marks as well. I agree. The scratch they, marks, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Like, they're deep. I think they're trying to tell us it's a woman. Mm -hmm. Although I don't believe that nails are in any way Indicative, relegated to being but, women, mm -hmm. I do think they're they're signaling to us that it's a woman. He's also like a large person himself that it might be more difficult for a woman <coughs> to <laughs> strangle a man unless he's necessarily drugged or unprompted. You get what I'm saying? I could strangle oh. a man. Possibly too. What was there was there any drugs in the system right. in the autopsy? Forgot about that. I there was. Uh, we have Susan Lee. Susan is the veterinarian. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So to get to the veterinary clinic, you would have to drive by the location that he was murdered, which is where she went to after the reunion. She didn't end up going out with everybody because she was dealing with a lawsuit uh, mm -hmm. currently with Charlie because yeah. he uh, was like uh, neglectful. Murdered her horse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The horse that the she horse, was thinking of. Did a bunch of bad stuff. Consistently <laughs> neglectful too. Yeah, that was consistently like, consistent like really problem. fucking it up. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of sketchy in itself. She has a lot of motive, but 
She's also already legally kind of in the process of taking action. Yeah, so, so like know, it would be weird, would you, I guess, yeah, weird to murder him while suspicious. she's actively suing him. Yeah. Because right. then she's not going to get anything out yeah. of it. I think that's a very good point. Yeah. Uh, Nita. Nita was in town for the reception and all of this, uh -huh. but she's a journalist. So mm -hmm. for the most part, all of the interviews with her are just like, you got anything for a story for me, eh? She's like yeah. out in the 1950s. Yeah, yeah. 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 100%. And like, yeah. I love the way she describes she's like, it. She's on a bus. Yeah, she's yeah. very like film noir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's a detective. Yeah. She's yeah. a lot of fun. Sarah, uh, Sarah is his wife. We played a voicemail last time. Uh, it was, was her testimony. It was or, uh, but we read oh, no, her the testimony. testimony. The testimony mm -hmm. was horrifying from Sarah. She seemed genuinely mm -hmm. distraught. Yeah. yeah. We did discover that there could be a motive if he was having an affair with Robin. Mm -hmm. Sarah could technically have a motive. The significant other always could, but she's really convincing. And then lastly is Gavin Ash. Gavin Ash is like uh, kind of rich, hot shot, moved out of town, didn't really give a shit, didn't want to be there. His testimony was kind of like, I don't I don't know what happened to him, man. Mm -hmm. Who cares? I remember, I think we noted he was the least suspect. He seemed like yeah. kind of jaded douche. They used to be friends, I think. Yeah, is that who we ruled out last jaded time? Jaded douche, he was very mm -hmm. not we ruled bothered. ruled out Gavin? We, get, we so. did rule him out, but he was very not bothered by the death, which was yeah. a little strange. That, yeah. is, that is honestly a little suspect, too. I guess it's a little suspect, but like, if you had committed a crime, it would be bold of you to be like, I don't give a shit what happened to him. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're not trying to fake it at all. Yeah. A murder, especially in a small small town, would be out of some kind of passion. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't care he about no anything. Passion you're right. So yeah. that's why we. But I will say about Gavin again, he, they, we had um, like records from his past that he was violent in the past. Like that's he had true. beat someone so he up is in true. like. In high school. In high school. It was a while ago. Yeah. yeah. He's but definitely different now. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so we've ruled out Gavin. We could be wrong, but we're going to go mm -hmm. on from that. We have some evidence on the table. Let's get in the next box. Let's yeah. do it. Woo! It's a little troll doll. <gasps> I love Oh, wait, Whoa. what? It's a little oh, tummy. Little boy. Little boy. Little boy. Little boy. Little boy. Little 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 boy. And then, <coughs> ooh. Wow. Oh. Wait, whoa, don't do that. Wait, is that, was that from the body? Or is that for us? I feel like that's it for us. It was just in here. I think oh, it's for okay. us. <laughs> it wasn't I was like, wait, whoa. Baggy. Should I not be? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I figured it out. Okay. Um, I figured it out. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a little tiny little butt. Tiny little butt. Can you see it? Can you see <laughs> it? Yeah. Can, can, you, can you see it? Can you, can you see, see it? it? <laughs> can you see it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh. There was oh, a note, note on it? Oh. oh my god. Okay. Should we get into that first? We don't need that. <laughs> uh, so this. No. Yeah. Do you think that's to read the note, maybe? I think you can read it. I'm sure there's something no, else. It's big enough. You don't think maybe this will give it? You know, I'll do it. <laughs> you know, I'll do it. You don't think you should use that tool? Really quick, when I was a weird little boy, I asked for these all the time. Troll and so I have oh a collection God. of yeah. troll dolls. Treasure trolls. No, they're big ones. They have a little gem on their bellies. Oh, I would, I would pull their hair. I was a weird little oh. Okay, here we go. I can only do one word at a time with this. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I found at my parents' place. I couldn't resist hiding it for you to find later. Do you still uh, okay. hate these kids as much as you did in high school? Robin? When Maggie's born, I bet she'll love weird toys like this. Thanks again for the ride back. The ride Whoa. back. It's not signed by anybody? This is Aura's handwriting. Aura! Uh, she wrote the word ride in here and the word ride in here and they are identical. I know we're going before there's more information. Aura to me is, is so raised sus. in sus suspicion. So sus. Because she's also someone who can easily set up a frame. She's yeah. the only one who knows the motive of Susan and yeah. can set up Susan and maybe even knows possibly what's going on internally with That's the drug dealing true. and other things because she's family. But Just want to throw that up now. But I agree. Like this was in the car. Yeah. Um, okay, so what we have in here no, Aura does not. Is a statement from Athena Matsukas, uh, which is Nicholas's mom. It says, yes, I remember that night. How could I forget? After watching Charles grow up, I'll never forget that night. I'll never forget his friends' faces when they found out. You went to school with Charles too, right? I remember you, yes. Georgios and I were setting up. Nicholas wanted his friends to come to the taverna later than we usually open these days. He came to the restaurant right after the reunion to help out. Yes, before anyone else. I talked with, him, with Antonio, the longest. He came earlier than the rest. He was telling me about his son, and I told him about raising a boy and what to watch for. Arthur came. He was the only one close to coming at 10, like Nicholas said. Then Robin. Uh, then that Gavin came almost 15 minutes late, soaking wet and shouting for food like a dog. Nita came around then, too. I was uh, expecting Susan and Aura, but I now know why Aura didn't come in Charles. You're right, Nicholas wasn't there when Gavin came. I, I forgot, I think he ran out to the store for something, maybe. I can't keep track of my son all the time. He's a grown man, but he always helps us when he comes over and I know that he did that night. Please find who did this. No one in the town knows what to believe. I'm taking his poor mother some food tonight. I'll 
tell her that you're still working hard. I believe she's also lying about Nick being there first because I don't believe Antonio saw Nick. I believe Antonio was the first one there and didn't see anyone else. So I believe those are two contradictory Yeah, which makes sense she would protect her son. And then she also stepped back in her own witness test. Would you uh, yeah, get us on the iPad and oh, start yeah, looking at those yeah. things? Because that she they was were saying there was don't discrepancies. Right? Yeah, we have uh, a yeah. Valentine's Day card. Oh, this is from Charlie. My dearest sir, I love you so much. I wish I was better with words, but I hope that my actions are enough for you to know how in love with you I am. My life would be nothing without you and Maggie. I still wonder every day what I did to deserve such a perfect partner as you. I've never found an answer, but I'll continue to dedicate the rest of my life to show you how grateful I am to share all of this with you. I love you. Yours forever, Charlie. And then the little, the actual card itself says, to the love of my life, to my beautiful wife, and then we've been through so much together and I count myself unbelievably lucky to make this journey through life with you by my side of all of my love. Happy Valentine's Day. So he loves his wife. Doesn't this look like a spooky faith? It doesn't look a spooky Oh, face. I do see it. I'm giving a lot of signals that I won't be helpful today. <laughs> <laughs> this is the internal memorandum that it seems like uh, came down on oh, Nick's workplace. Nick, Nick, Nick. Representatives LFOA are reaching out to you as a friendly reminder of certain agreements laid out by the company-wide NDA regarding shared proprietary information between parties. Hmm. There is a reason why we encrypt information. Keep Alice and Bob in mind. Every employee is obligated to uphold this agreement with respect and responsibilities outlined there with therein. This agreement is made between listening friends of America and affiliates, signed employee, retrieving party. We understand that uh, receiving party understands that listening friends America has disclosed or may disclose proprietary information. It's just an NDA for the most part. Mm, okay. It is important to note that the breaking of this NDA will result in an immediate termination. It could be an NDA because of maybe prior action. It does seem like that. It, it says it went to all employees though. Mm. It is literally addressed wow. to all employees. And then this Thank is the call know. log from the veterinary hospital that Susan runs mm -hmm. on the day of the murder. Okay. The problem is they don't say who they're to, they're just whether it's outgoing or incoming into a cell or a landline. But if she was on a phone on a landline, well, I guess not her landline, but it is. It's an office landline. So if she was on the phone, she couldn't have been there. What time was the murder? Uh, Charlie oh. is murdered, estimated 9.37. Okay, so she is on yeah. a phone call for three minutes at 9.27. It was an incoming call to a cell number. Okay. And then she is on the phone again at 9.49 for a minute and 44 seconds, which is again is incoming. She answered a phone. That would be very quick to go and murder somebody. But what I am seeing from this is that like, it likely could not have been Susan. To me, this kind of rules out Susan if she answered a phone call at 927 and at 949. So this is incoming on the landline. Yeah. When it says cell, it's from a cell to the landline? Yes. Could it be in coordination with Aura? I've not considered it could have been a team up. Just on suggestion, I think we possibly. have a killer. This is the gift bag evidence. There's a photo of the gift bag for the, I believe, Charlie's birthday. Oh, okay. It was in Charlie's car. If you see this, it says, happy birthday, Sarah. When you wear this, I hope you think of me XOXO. Is this Charlie's writing, though? That's oh, true. Yeah. Kind of looks like Robin's writing. Oh my God. If his wife and his ex-girlfriend are having an affair, <laughs> I'm thrilled. So I think we that that is that. from Charlie to Sarah. Do we have any like big discrepancy in the handwriting? Not big discrepancy. That one's more cursive-y than this one is, but I think it's the same. Okay. So uh, these are the two articles that kind of give us more information about um, our various suspects. So this first one is about Robin and she is a farmer. She runs, this is like, she celebrates a fall farmer's festival. She runs it every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Really interesting quote from her though, um, because they're raising money for Farmers Against Drugs uh, which is an anti-drug campaign. Illegal prescription drugs are an epidemic in our country, or our county, yeah, sorry, okay. says Dupree. I love this town and I love the people here like family. It is my responsibility as a citizen to protect our traditional way of life. And she has a holistic medicine stand. Robin's yeah. got more motive. Robin's she hates got drugs. More, yeah, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, and then this guy is about Gavin, who we know is a plastic surgeon. It just, I think this is just character assassination of Gavin a little bit, either to make us suspect him or make us just like, to, like trick us, fake us out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. But he apparently did a surgery on someone, like one of his patients. They wanted their chin fixed, but he also added lips to them too and made them really grotesque and big. Mm -hmm. And he said that that was what the guy asked for. And the guy was like, I did not ask for that. But I think the reason I got these was because he is like the guy, the patient is dating the ex-wife of the surgeon. So they thought it was like a vengeance, oh. like a revenge. 
revenge kind of thing. Interesting. Venge the vengeance. Wow. Here is the surveillance footage photos. Let's watch it or let's see it. These are the photos and these are timestamps. So I'm not okay. sure who this is. This is a looks like maybe a person has a beard. This, this is, could be Antonio. This is the um, outside of the uh, in taverna. the parking lot. It could possibly be Nick as well. And this is the second photo. This is 1023. Very clearly, someone different. Yeah, who's got long hair? This one in the center seems to have his hair pulled back in a ponytail. I think that's. I don't know who it is. That's a long haired person. I think that that person must have been Antonio or. The first or, one? Yeah, the first yeah. person I think was Antonio. That would make sense because Antonio was the first one to be there. Okay. And that's the discrepancy is them saying that Nick was there early. So that's the only discrepancy. Antonio was in the parking lot and he said he didn't see anyone. That's at 923. And why would she lie about anyone else that mm -hmm. she's protecting? Yeah, her or son. How yeah. early would you get there? The party ends at 9. So you're yeah. telling me you left and then were there for 15 minutes and then left again in order yeah. to come back an hour and a half later? I so feel that. pretty confident that we have cleared Antonio. Oh, we didn't use this thing at all. Oh, yeah. Um, for why? Oh, no, the Wait. note. Oh, I... Oh. Is it this thing? Whoa. Yeah, there's a there's a something right there. Alice 3, Mont 17. There's more later? That says Bob 3, 15, Mont 17. And Kimmy's... Uh, made it very clear there's a third Sorry. one. This, one, not, this, one, this one's actually really easy to read, <laughs> okay, so do, do you want to say love that one out loud? Things. Yes, please. Um, footnote. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> footnote. A lot of <laughs> letters in a row. <laughs> Woo! Um, so Whoa. if you want to write them out. It says footnote as well? It says footnote, and okay. then uh, colon, and then K-B-W-G-K-W-2-Z-V-E-C-H. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. Either an A or an O, so give yourself okay. an option. Uh, D D S B O U O W B eight W and then Q. Uh, there's a reason why we encrypt information. Keep Alice and Bob in mind. This is odd. It's like they're it trying to odd. sneak insider trading information in the NBA. It does to seem say, that way. Don't do that. Uh, just to recap, who we have ruled out this time? We ruled out Susan, and we ruled out Antonio. So this is a mixtape case. I was just curious if they put an actual CD in there. No. Um, from Robin. Ooh. Wait, if there's no actual CD in there, it's probably it's in the use, tape. right? Uh, or well, like, you know, he just doesn't have it after all these years mm -hmm. or something. I'm your all-American girl, a Robin Dupree original. <laughs> oh, God. Cringe. Robin. Of course Robin. she <laughs> Eat a pepper tonight. I really <laughs> pepper tonight. Y'all, I think it's Robin. Um, so I, sincere, Alana O'Leary, to make you happy. Always, always, always insane about you. I will see you in my dreams. Another Robin Dupree original. You inspire me so much. And this is what? spelled I will see you in my dream, you. Mm. And then on the inside, hand me your heart, one day today, can't wait to fall in love. It's all just kind of things, a lot of like initialing and hearts that mm -hmm. say like CM plus RD to Charlie Love Robin. Do we think this is old? Do we think this is new? I think this is old. Yeah? I hope Why it's is old. it still in the car <laughs> if it's from his high school days? And there's a fanny pack as well. Can I get another fanny pack? At the McDonough's. 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 <laughs> I found two items hanging on the fridge. A drawing by Charlie and Sarah's daughter, Maggie, and Aww. a bus ticket. With what? an N. <gasps> With an N. We've got only one N, and that's Nick. Uh-oh. Nita, but, too. Nita. Oh, Nita. Is that, does it have long hair? It does. It's mom, so this one's mom. Mom. And, and this is one Nick. is Nick. Nick has long hair. We've got a photo of him at night, uh, 1023. True. Oh, my God. And they're also, on top of dead daddy. Dead daddy who's like, I don't know. Yeah. <gasps> that is, what the makes fuck? Makes me want to cry. That's, that's <laughs> really. <laughs> Someone go check on Maggie. That's yeah, really she's, she's a really bad drawer. Yeah. 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 That's Honestly, really so sad. not talented. So she's awful. Yeah. Well, okay, but here's Whoa. the thing for me. They put that on the fridge. This is like an <laughs> omen ass child. She's in the corner like. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. We also have all the addresses. It's a list of all addresses of, I'm, I think, residents. So if okay. we ever need to, we've got just We can cross-reference them on yeah. the map. Because it took her so long to do it. Yeah. Although we've ruled out Sarah as a suspect, I conducted a second statement for her as well, believing that she could provide more detail to corroborate other stories. Yes, I can answer some more questions for you. What is this about? No, I was home the entire night. As I said before, Maggie was sick. Plus, we only have one car. Nita said that? Uh, well, yeah, she did stop by briefly. I didn't think it was important enough to mention. She's been a good friend for a long time. And Charlie and I, our marriage was 
I love Charlie, I do. He was sweet and caring and funny and fantastic father to Maggie, but we were in a bit of a rough, rough patch. There we go. We had been for some time. Charlie didn't want to give up. That was never his style. He loved me and Maggie so much that he would do anything to make it work. He was constantly worried about providing for his family, making sure that we had the best. He was adamant that Maggie was going to an Ivy League school. It was sweet. It's funny, now that he's gone, I can only seem to remember the good things about him. Why couldn't I have done that while he was still around? But yes, to answer your question, yeah, right? Mm. Nita did stop by after the reunion. She wanted to check in on me and drop something off. She didn't stay long, maybe five minutes. I can't say for sure. I've been a bit, I mean, it's been hard since. I just want all of this to be over. Please tell me you've got a new lead. I need something, anything about what happened to Charlie. I think she was very honest in this. I don't think that this really gives her motive. I don't know, to me it's a little, to me it feels like she's dropping purposeful lines. Like us, oh yeah, our marriage it was, uh, it was, oh it was fine. We were going through some rough patches. I she feel like that's was rough. To, she like, didn't want to make it work, and he you know. did. Yeah, this is Nita. So I'll say this one next. Mm. I think this is Nita, bro. I. Okay, Ooh. so yeah. we can do this again if we have to. Like I said last time, I went to my hotel to grab my wallet before going to the taverna. What do you mean unaccounted? Okay, I went to Sarah and Charlie's house before heading to the diner. I know I didn't mention this. It didn't seem relevant. I didn't want you asking Sarah about me when she clearly has bigger things on her plate right now. We're good friends. The three of us went to college together. I introduced them to each other. Yeah, Sarah and me are still close. I felt bad that she needed to stay home with Mags while the rest of us hung out. I'm sorry, what does this have to do with Charlie's murder? The murderer is still out there while you're standing here asking me pointless questions. It's been months. Why, do you even have a lead suspect? You're too busy trying to figure out my timeline, but what was Charlie's? Why was he at the Grove at all? I wasn't anywhere near the Grove that night. I grabbed my wallet, I dropped by Sarah's, I said hi to her and goodnight to Maggie, and I went to the diner. Are we done now? Mm. Interesting. Wow. Um, do we have mm. Nita's mm -hmm. handwriting? Because wow. if we have oh, the, the gift bag, the, the gift bag. Gift bag. Now it could be a friendship, but if it was Bro. something more than that, oh my god! I hadn't even considered it could be Nita, and it it well, looks much closer. Yeah, not until these last two statements do we even think. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, it does look kind of feminine. It does. Hopefully. An XOXO. I think that's Nita. Ooh. Oh my god! So we think, did she buy her like some lingerie or something? Wow. Oh. It's, 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 it's her, the H's are exactly the same. Oh, oh my god, okay. Yeah. Cool. And it's in the so back of Charlie's car. why is it in Charlie's car? Because they only have one car. Which is it's why the ring, shared car. which is why the necklace as well might be in the car. So it could have been Nita's then or Sarah's yeah. because it's Mm -hmm. A shared car. Uh, I'm gonna read the next statement. If that's I still all right, think it could it's be from, Robin. Though. Uh, that's mm -hmm. who we're gonna read. The next statement is Robin Dupree. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> I thought we were done with questioning. It's not like it's a problem, but well, I've just been trying to move on from this whole tragedy like everyone else. Forcing me to keep talking about it won't help much. No, I didn't mean it like that. You're not forcing me. Yes, I consented to this. If you're asking me what my relationship with Charlie was, we were friends. Maybe we weren't as close as we were when we were teenagers, but that's just how life is. Michelle, we went to high school together. I assume I didn't need to tell you that Charlie and I dated back then. Is that relevant somehow? I'm just a little confused. It was ages ago. Look, I'm sorry I can't remember specific times and all that. I didn't think I'd have to account for every single step I took that night. My house? I live next to the family farm. Well, I didn't mention it because I thought you knew where I lived. I mean, you grew up in town too, so I figured you knew. Was I wrong to assume? No, I just don't get why all this matters. What I said in the last interview is still true, so there's nothing else I can add. Mmm, she's being a little defensive. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. lastly, our other N person, Nick. Mm -hmm. This is getting out of hand. I don't want anyone getting the wrong idea about me or my family. My mother told me she talked to you. She also told me she lied to you. I'm sorry, she just wants to protect me, we called it. Mm -hmm. um, I was not at the Taverna when she said, the first time we talked, I told you the truth. I went to the bar. Yes, I have proof. I went through my junk drawer yesterday to find this, which I'm assuming is the receipt that mm -hmm. we're gonna see. Give me a second. Here, look at this. Charlie was supposed to meet me there, but he didn't make it. The personal things? I'm sorry, what are you talking about? Oh, that. Look, I shouldn't be telling anyone this. It could get me in a lot of trouble at work. Mm. I made a mistake by talking about these things with Charlie, the NDA. That's why I needed to see him after the reunion. Nothing else. I'm sorry. I need to keep my job so I can't say more. That's why I gave you that memo last time you wanted to talk, to show you that this was coming from my company, not me. And it has nothing to do with Charlie. I would never have involved him. It's my problem. I'll deal with it. I just got used to talking to Charlie about my problems. He is, I mean, was, a great listener. I wish I could talk to him now. I got um, chills from that for no reason. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we're getting so close. Yeah. 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 And we do know where the murder took place. At the Grove. Absolutely. At the Grove. At the Grove. At the Grove. Yeah. Um, Which she said is close to the 
Uh, it's close to the veterinarian area. Yeah, it's down south of the city. I'm yeah. sorry, she said the farm is near the grove. Uh, the farm, yeah, she said, that. here's okay. the grove down yeah, here. Yeah, the grove's down here. No, farmland is everything it, in, yeah. in slashes, so this is farmland. Yeah. That's farm. Okay. okay. Um, so it's all down so here by possible. the murder. Wow. And uh, on top of that is a bus ticket to out of town. The fanny pack hasn't come up. It's oh, just... I, did I leave that in there? I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 this is the interview with Gavin, so a three-page interview. So basically, uh, Gavin came forward and he was like, I like, listen, I, I didn't kill him, but I do have some information to share. And it was mm -hmm. basically that him and Charlie, they used to really like get into drugs when they were kids and like have fun party, like drinking time. So he really wanted Charlie to do that with him again for the reunion. Charlie wasn't down. He's like, I want to stay sober when I get home to misses. Like didn't want to take anything, drink anything. So Gavin went and crushed up some Valium, his own Valium and put it in Charlie's drink wow. so that he would be fun Charlie again. Um, mm -hmm. But basically, so That's... he's like, I just did it because I wanted him to like I let loose and his wife, and he said his wife sucks. Like he, he was saying that like that, that um, what's her name, Sarah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice, is like the stick in the mud. So he went into the janitor's closet with their other classmate, Jenny Crane, uh -huh. messed that up. So that explains why that closet was all uh -huh. messed up because they went and hooked up in there. Yep. Mm -hmm. They left to go hook up at a little bit before nine, came out after like That's 9.30. That's why he showered. Mm -hmm. and... Yeah, exactly. He he was smelling like booze, so he went back and showered. He said he got to the hotel at 9.40, which would be a very quick, like, 10 minutes from, like, hooking up to straight over to the hotel. That's pretty fast. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why he smelled, like, that's why he was wet. He went to go to the hotel and, like, shower off before the party. So this is the last bit I haven't read it. Probably around 9.40, I wasn't looking at my watch, but I knew I had at least enough time before meeting up at the diner. Um, the investigator, I need you to try and remember as much as you can and trace your steps. The fact that you left the reunion and disappeared before turning up the diner doesn't reflect well on you. Nash says, that's really all I can remember, I swear. Investigator, fine, I'll write that down too. Nash, listen, I know I look kind of suspicious. I wouldn't be here if I was guilty of something as insane as murder. I admit I lied at first, but can you blame me? Charlie and I used to be close, and there's a lot going on in my life right now, and I don't really need any of this. Um, investigator, right, is that all? Nash, this isn't, this is gonna be made public or anything, right? Like, there's, like, confidentiality between us? Great, um, investigator, you are a part of this investigation, Mr. Nash. What you have said here will become a matter of public record eventually. Nash, oh shit. Great, if that's all, I'll be showing you out now. Thank you for coming, Mr. Nash. I'll be checking up on all of this to make sure it tracks. If you remember anything else, please contact me. Wow. Nash, oh, um, yeah, sure, sure thing. <laughs> um, we do have these other pieces of evidence that were at the bottom of the envelope. The bus ticket here has a code on the back. Mm. We also should identify whose handwriting that is. And the then this is from the bar that he said he Nick went to. Yeah, this is Nick Matsukas uh, from 9.42 p.m. He was at the bar. Okay, so it looks like Nick. Nick uh, is cleared. Nick is clear. Uh, this was just like a pamphlet from his funeral. Um, beloved son, husband, father, and friend, we celebrate your life. Uh, there's a quote on the back that appears to be something from like a Bible-y thing that says, for everything there is a reason and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, mm. a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Does that have a time to kill on here? And that's the end of our evidence for this episode. It's I think boss. that, personally, I think it's safe to say that I don't think Robin was involved. Um, and I really? would say, oh, yeah. no, I still super I don't, think Robin And the is. reason why I would say that is because Robin is pretty defensive, but in a way that I think a legitimate person would be versus, I don't know, everyone else had more information that they needed to give up. Robin's only new information was that she lives next door to where she implied but she lived. in this box, we got another piece that he had in his car from Robin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have the love letter. Like, I'm personally not ruling out Robin. Mm -hmm. But maybe those things, maybe those things Charlie well, brought with Susan. the intention of wanting to be with Robin. But it seems like Charlie was so madly in love with his wife. Mm -hmm. Like everything they're giving us implies mm -hmm. that like he loved her mm -hmm. and she wasn't necessarily happy. Okay. Which means that we are down to three suspects at this point. Uh, and that is Sarah, Nita, and Robin are our three main suspects. Number one man? So, opening box six. At the start of this investigation, I'd gone through his cell phone, but nothing seemed to be significant at the time. Based on our new evidence, there's a chance that some irregular voicemails in Charlie's inbox could relate to the case. They're all from the same unlisted phone number, staggered over several weeks. I couldn't find the number it's registered to. Uh, it didn't match cell phone or workplace numbers belonging to any of our suspects. All right, here's voicemail number one. Okay. Driving. Empty. Ah. Empty. Ah. Oh, driving. Possibly. Two.
So I can bury, dragging. Yeah, digging, maybe I heard dragging. dragging. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe moving papers. Here's yeah, three. Yeah. Very uncomfortable. What? Here's voicemail I don't four. Like it. <laughs> that's a that's a mouth opening very slowly. <laughs> oh, whoa. Okay, Icky. here's here's voicemail five. What's that carving weird. or something? So We've got like two more. Cutting. Voicemail six. That's a woman. That's a woman's Very voice. Very weird. <laughs> and here's seven. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many. That's right. Album. Album. Every and moment passes me, and I, I remember, remember you. you. I do want to just say, if that is a woman crying on the line, they're calling Charlie's phone, right? Yeah, she's breathing heavy. Yeah, yeah I mean, maybe they're remorseful. Maybe they're crying, listening to a voicemail. You know, like, it's like, hey, thanks for calling Charlie. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? It just yep. seems like that could have been Sarah. So we do have this photo that looks like all of them in high school, or at least some of them in high school. Uh, real quick, the one screenshot that we have of mm -hmm. social media. Uh, same old story, not much to say. Hearts are broken every day. Uh, does this look like Robin? Yeah. Does yeah. this Robin. look like yeah, peppers? That's Robin. Robin. Yeah, I don't so know if that's yeah, Robin. Yeah. There's not three bell peppers in her hands. That's true. Uh, right. How but is Robin is it? still on our list of, of suspects, suspects. Yeah. and obviously a song was left. She left the album. Uh, we've got an update that possibly says it might be Robin, and this is something for everyone to look at. Oh Here is... We're gonna need to plug that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta show it to is... Oh, she's oh. wearing the ring! Oh. Yeah. Okay, this is before he died? This is uh, November 11th, 2009. So, this is um, when his car was vandalized, similarly to the headstone, which will be detailed there. I will say Robin, like, one of her original songs is I Will, will See, see. Oh but like God. Will Letter uh -huh. You're so right. I think Robin desecrated the um, tombstone. Look at what's on the tombstone. Uh, it says, perpetrator needs the red spray paint to write down the words of each on, on the door of the V. Will see I you. I will see you. Yeah, so this is Robin definitely did the car, without uh -huh. a yeah, doubt. Yeah, I think she did the tombstone and as well. And what's on the tombstone? First of all, the inscription reading beloved husband was scratched out, and then there was a heart with two horizontal lines Ooh. carved into the headstone, which I think is referring to like that, right? Yeah. Oh. I'm going to be honest. To me, that it's implies huge. more loss than it does murder. Because if you murder, wouldn't you be done with it? She wanted her, to, wanted him to be but with her. But he's in a marriage that isn't fully working out, right? At some point, they might divorce. They might something. If you're holding out hope to fall in love with this person, I don't think you're going to murder them and then still long for them. That's straight up psychotic. Yeah, it's a murderer. Yeah. I know, no, I understand that. But I, to me, that well, makes that less sense. That murderer would have to well, be I a guess, I guess my, I guess what I'm trying to say is that to me makes less, less sense. sense than yeah. possibly a different relationship right. going on because he was so committed to his wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, Noah. I will say that I think this might be just a clue from the, the game, possibly. Mm -hmm. There's a quote from Michelle Gray in this that says, it's highly probable that the desecration is connected in some way to the murder. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that they're just being like, okay. They're guiding, okay. Us. They're guiding so, us a little bit. There were a few related incidents and uh, they are saying that whoever did this to the tombstone most likely did all of them based on the handwriting that they saw in the mm -hmm. spray paint. Victim placed a call to non-emergency line reporting graffiti found on his vehicle, identified himself as Charles. <laughs> The style and handwriting of the message this? matches oh, graffiti so. in similar vandalism act, uh, incidents over the last three weeks. Victim stated that he needed to file a report for his insurance reimbursement. Uh, was not interested in pressing charges if the vandal was ever found. There are currently no suspects. Is that he on the vehicle or on the... Um, this is okay. on the vehicle currently. The vehicle, yeah. He knew it was her. He mm -hmm. was like, I, I'm not interested in pressing charges, but I just have to do this to make my insurance cover it. Right. Because he would recognize that probably it was the one from there. So this one was red spray paint graffiti found uh, in an area of Willow Lane known as the Grove across many tree trunks. There are the words, every me passes in moment. Every moment passes me. Is that going to be another song? That song that was playing. Oh, oh, oh my God, the song is on the voicemail. Oh, shit. <laughs> Okay, and then the last one is red spray paint found in the separate parking spots in a lot of Chestnut Falls High School that says, I remember, I remember you. Yep, that's also from that song. Yeah, also, the only takeaway from this time capsule, which is written present day Charlie, is writing about his high school reunion, oh, okay. I believe. What are your biggest goals? Find a new password that isn't my birthday? I don't know, et cetera, et cetera. So we have his birthday. What's his birthday? So if we need a password for mm -hmm. something, we have his, his birthday. His USB drive. The USB drive has a password. Yeah, right. yeah. So this 
I put into the general decoder. Oh, did it come back with something? It came back with a couple misspellings, oh. but I think from it I can discern that it says one more week, love, can't wait. <gasps> it's from <gasps> Chicago to uh, oh, the Port Authority Nita. bus terminal, New York. Two adults, one child. Two adults and one child. Nita. She was gonna leave them. Oh my mm -hmm. God. She was gonna leave them. I came no. across a flash drive stashed in the back of a desk drawer. No. Sarah recognized it as one of the many belonging to Charlie, and she assumed it was for his work, but unlike the others that stored pharmaceutical documents and scans of bills, this particular flash drive was locked. If the contents turn out to be relevant, it will definitely be worth the trouble of figuring out the password and accessing those files. Okay, this is to N. Are you up? No. Yes. Ooh, oh, another then, uh, oh, code. It's a room booked for Friday evening. Oh! From N. Uh, oh, wow. That's that great. Oh, my God. And she responds, can't go a week without me, can you? Oh. Yep. yep. And she says, shh. <laughs> so, it is, so, it is, so it is Nita in that picture. Uh, we would be. assume over Nick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're yes. obviously in love. Yeah, The yeah. story I'm covering should be a breeze. It's the same thing. Oh, yeah, I'm coming into town and booking a story. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. It's definitively Nita in the text. It's definitively Nita in the picture that yeah. the child drew. Okay, we know now that Sarah was definitely planning on leaving. Mm -hmm. Charlie. And we know Charlie was committed to his relationship. Yes. Yes. I'm just, I think from literally like box one or two, whenever we found this, I've been like, whoever has this, this is the weird. Person. This yeah. is weird that you would go and buy his class ring and not just buy it, like, oh, I, you know, maybe I'll get to give it back to him at some point. She's wearing it. She had a photo shoot with it. She had a photo shoot with peppers, so I feel like she, her brain isn't all there. <laughs> She's really into peppers. Peppers yeah. are kind of her whole thing. Uh, so the statement down below after saying the story should be a breeze, she, uh, she says we can uh, watch terrible daytime television and have a cheeky drink or three. Oh, that's it, okay. Yeah, it's just some bad party. It's cute, all right. <laughs> okay. Well, that sucked. Careful, fine, seeing you and Charlie together is the first gray there. Okay. Running into you was a complete accident. Ooh. That says, I'm buying the tickets soon. The, there, there it is, Ooh. okay, definitively the bus ticket. Yeah. The one before, okay, we're not talking about this anymore. He won't be forever. He won't be forever. All right, we gotta do the oh, one above. Oh, we have the one before right it, it because yeah, it's probably not saying that like uh -huh. he won't be forever. Like it's probably saying something uh -huh. of like he's my husband. And that says taking Maggie away from Charlie. He's still a huge part of our lives. <laughs> he won't be he forever. Won't be forever. Okay. He won't be forever. Well, if you leave him, yeah, also, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Him. Yeah, yeah. Could yeah. be murder. Very much could be murder. But for but murderer be to be like, he won't be for long. <laughs> I mean, if you're like, planning, yeah. they either have cheeky chats all day long. Let's watch daytime television and have one drink or three. Right. You know, you can't spend a week without me. You know, <laughs> wow, that's we'll a great setup to be like, yeah, oh, yeah. and then, you know, daytime let's have uh, kisses <laughs> while we bury your husband. I'm gonna say Sarah's not involved. Nita is like, they're having the affair. Mm -hmm. And then Nita's like, hey, we gotta cut to the chase. The Charlie needs to go away so that we can just like do this. Mm -hmm. But why did she buy her a bus exactly. ticket beforehand? And then like, I'm gonna buy the ticket. I'm gonna get you out of here. Like she was already leaving. Mm -hmm. She clearly wasn't saying she wasn't gonna leave him. She was like, you always say that. You say you're gonna get the tickets and you haven't. So clearly Sarah is ready and willing to leave him. She's not saying I want to stay. She's hesitating that taking him out of Maggie's life is difficult. But the fact that she was like, you always say that about the bus tickets, it's like, she seems down. Let's there. look at the log. Oh, okay. Oh, so uh, this log is from him. Uh, 2-4 at 11.23 p.m. She forgot our anniversary. No mention of it all day. Thought she might have had a surprise party plan like last year. Brought it up over dinner. She seemed to be upset and apologized. Ooh. Offered to Jeez. celebrate a belated anniversary by going out to dinner. She would rather just stay home and spend time with Maggie. Sarah surprised me with concert tickets. Told me to take Antonio and have a boys night. Maybe I'm worried over nothing. She didn't want to go with you, dude. Had a fantastic lunch date. Talked like we did back in college. Happy to have things back as they should be. Mm -hmm. Sent Maggie to a friend's house so we could have the house to ourselves for the night. Tried to watch a movie. Sarah was on her phone the entire time. Wouldn't oh tell me who she was texting. Went to visit her parents for the weekend. I offered to join her so that Maggie could spend time with grandparents. She went. Uh, she wants Maggie and I to have a father-daughter weekend instead. Oh, so she was she clearly was going to see Nita. Left from work to meet Sarah at MNC for dinner. Sarah called to cancel, had to work late. Sarah came home in a cab, went out for drinks with coworkers. <gasps> went out for drinks with coworkers again, followed only with one person, oh. got a picture, can't tell who the other woman is. Oh my God. A wonderful weekend. I'm putting too much into this. Uh, she still loves me. Oh, no. Left for a girls night, wearing a new dress and jewelry. Visiting her parents again, another father-daughter weekend. Her boss called, Sarah didn't show up for work. He wanted to make sure she was okay. Canceled lunch date, busy at work. Went through her phone while she was in the shower. Hate myself for doing it. Found weird messages to end. Conversations going back months. Took some screenshots, you know what they say. Oh, you know, please go ahead. Oh, sorry, yeah, I don't know why I was so invested in the story that Do I it. whispered it to myself. <laughs> 
At 11.48 on 10.8, I can't figure out the text. At this point, I don't want to know. I either find something I don't want to see or I drive myself insane over nothing. I can't keep doing this. I love my wife. I need to trust that she loves me too. Yeah, that's us. Okay, so the final step is in here, there's a way to email her. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And email, email Michelle? You email Michelle the name. <gasps> I'm so excited. So is this just a gift in the box for me? To take home? <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> the fanny pack literally never evidence. came up, which is so funny. Oh yeah, take that. That's free evidence. There's not even any blood on it. Not yet. You're right. What is it? Why? Yeah, that's so weird. They would have a piece of evidence and not say anything okay. about mm -hmm. it. Let's talk about this. <sighs> Let's I've talk given about my it. opinion. I want to know everyone else's because I do think it should be a, a majority vote. Yes. My personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Robin, Nita. Robin yeah. has all of all of this, right? There's so much of like, I love him, I love him, I love him. Mm -hmm. I just don't see how that would play out when we have so much actual evidence of plans, all of this. It's like, okay, what's, what's Robin got after she kills him? Whereas mm -hmm. Nita has so much set up for her and Sarah to go and do. This feels like a big setup in mm -hmm. a way either from the game or from Nita. That's a good point. If Nita's setting it up, she, in her interview, said it's been months and you still don't have suspects. Maybe after that interview, she goes and vandalizes the the gravestone uh -huh. in order to set up Robin as an extra suspect. Mm -hmm. So right? with, with Nita, it's, there is so much evidence, mm -hmm. but there, yeah, like why the bus ticket? Why the clear intent to leave her husband so Nita has nothing to really like fight for at this point, you know? Like it's very clear that Sarah is good to go. Yeah. But like with the whole, Robin situation, it's interesting that in none of these logs or anything from Charlie, anything about Robin is mentioned. It's clear that Robin is so in love with this guy. And he's not giving her the time. He's of not day. giving her anything, anything at all. Mm -hmm. And like the weird voicemails could be regret. It could be like oh, and the sadness. song playing. The mm -hmm. song playing is the, her. the song playing was the lyrics that are on her in her uh, Facebook photo no. caption. Or maybe, yeah, yes, caption. and they're also the ones written on the trees, though. They were the written you, on the trees, If yeah, you yeah. were deeply in love with someone to a crazy psycho amount, and uh -huh. then they get murdered. Yeah, you might still do wouldn't that. Wouldn't you call and yeah. listen to the voicemail over and over again? Maybe the song, yeah, we don't know that it's, well. Yeah, we don't know that the it's same. the murderer who left those You're voicemails. right, it's just the same phone number that we don't know yeah, yet. We don't. And we didn't even know where she lived prior to her last interview, so maybe it's her landline, maybe it's her cell phone, maybe it's a number we don't know. Right. There's um, also the mention that she is very against the drug situation. Yeah, that's and true. That is known about being, Charlie. Like, it's my personal responsibility. But would you become a, a vigilante to murder? Why would you stop at Charlie? Is he the top? Is he the one providing? I mean, don't we think that I maybe think he's skimming so drugs from somewhere else? I think she could be so heartbroken by yeah. him turning out to be like that. Yeah. Like, I mean, he you, is. You being wouldn't sued. love me if you were with me, right? You're being sued for all of this. Like, you wouldn't love me. You wouldn't be with me. Um, and now you've turned into this person who, you know, I'm so avidly against. Yeah, I just think that if you love someone, you definitely want to change them before you want to cast them aside. Say that to uh, statistics <laughs> about women. Um, all right. In, that's, that's very <laughs> valid. In heterosexual and relationships. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's oh, find out. Ah! You yeah. will be automatically returned to the inbox. Message sent. Okay. okay. Uh, Are we waiting? <gasps> It's here. Ah! Okay, okay. Let's do, someone else want to this do is it? So cool. Let's all just look at it okay, together. Okay, okay. You can put it in like okay. maybe the center here so we can okay. all. Yeah. Thank you for contacting me. First, I want to thank you all for your hard work these past several months. It's felt like it. It, <laughs> it made all the difference. Without you, I don't think I could have closed out this case. After reading your email and confirming your theory, I wrote up an arrest warrant for Robin Dupree. Oh. The Champaign, yeah, the Champaign uh, County judge quickly reviewed and approved the warrant. Officer Goff then made the arrest and transported Robin to the sheriff's office. I sat down with her for questioning, and it didn't take long for the confrontation to crumble her resolve. Robin confessed to Charlie's murder. <gasps> oh, wow! I attached a copy of the interview transcript to this email so you can see it for yourself. She will go to court and answer for her crimes, and Charlie's family can move toward knowing that justice will be served. Charlie's death was needless and cruel, and I regret not having the power to stop it. But as investigators, all we can do is review the facts and make sure the culprit is caught. I can't say I'm happy about the outcome, but I am relieved to, been, to say it's been resolved. I'm proud of the work we've accomplished. Thank you again for all you've done. Keep in mind, if future cages, press that PDF. Yes. 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 Interview. Okay. okay, this is the interview. Here, here, two, uh, two um, people. So okay. I'll do gray. Um, I'll do gray. You do the. Okay, I'll do Dupree. Thank you, Officer Goff. I'll take it from here, Miss Dupree. Do you want me to run through the night of the reunion? Really, Michelle? What is happening? Did Officer Goff inform you why you're being arrested? Yes, but then you know what this is about. Now, according to witness statements, Charles McDonald left the reunion <laughs> with someone. Was that person you? What? No. Who do you think it was then? I, I don't know. Antonio, Nick. Maybe it was Aura. She found his body after Antonio all. Antonio went right to the diner. Nick was at the bar, and Aura was still at the school. All of them 
them have solid alibis, which is more than I can say for you. According to your first statement, you went home after the reunion. Can anyone verify that? No, I live alone. You clo live close to the Grove, yes? Yes, but that doesn't prove anything. Then how about Charlie's high school ring being found at the crime scene? So? Charlie sold that ring in 1999. Do you want to tell me why it is in your possession in this picture? I, I this doesn't, still doesn't mean I killed him. No, can you put the crime scene around the time, I can put you at the crime scene around the time of his death. You have to admit it doesn't look good for you, and that isn't taking into account how you vandalized his grave. You can't? Or his car back in 2009. It seems you're obsessed with Charlie. It must have been painful for you to see him happily married to someone else. Stop it. I can put you at the scene of the crime, and you have the motive as well. So let me ask you again, do you want me to run you through the events of that night? No response. No? Well then, let me tell you what I think happened. Mm. And tell me if I'm right. I think that you were the person who left with Charlie the night of the reunion. I think that being around all of your high school friends stirred up feelings of resentment towards your ex-boyfriend you never dealt with. So you found a way to get Charlie alone and finally got your revenge for him dumping you. That's not how it happened. So you admit that you killed him. No response. Miss Dupree, I have all night. Neither of us is leaving here until you tell me what happened. I, I, I lost my temper. Go on. I was excited to see Charlie at the reunion. These past few years, our friendship has suffered and I really wanted to catch up with him. I tried talking to him multiple times that night, but he kept slipping away. Towards the end of the night, I tried one more time. He seemed off. Drugged. Now, I mm -hmm. know that's because of Gavin, because at the time, I just assumed he was a little drunk, I asked Charlie if we could talk privately and he agreed. I suggested we go somewhere before everyone met up at Dimitri's. That's how I ended up in his car. As we were driving, he kept acting weirder, so I made him pull over at the Grove. We talked for a bit and- You killed um, him! I didn't mean to! That oh. doesn't matter, does it? Charlie's dead. Going back to your story, where were you driving? The Grove isn't exactly on the way to Dimitri's. No response. What made you lose your temper? No response. Did you leave the ring on purpose? No, why are you asking all this? I already admitted to it. What more do you want? I want to know why, Robin. Why did you kill our classmate? Your supposed friend. Why did you kill Charlie Mack? Because he deserved it! Why? Why did you hate him? I didn't hate him! I never hated him! Then why did you kill him? Because for two decades he treated me like I didn't exist, like what we had was nothing. Because while I wanted to make this town better, he was a goddamn drug dealer. Did I set out that night to kill Charlie? No, I didn't, and I can't take it back. Please, Robin, tell me what happened. I need to know. All I wanted was to show him that he should be with me, not Sarah. I always knew that bitch wasn't good enough for him, and I was right. She was cheating on him with Nina, and he couldn't see it. When we were in the car, I suggested we go to the Grove. I wanted to remind him of all the times, all the good times we had there in, the, in high school. I wanted to show him what it could be like if we got back together. But when we got there, he rejected me. Again, even when he was drunk and high, even when I literally threw myself at him, he still didn't want me. He kept saying how much he loved his wife, he loved his daughter and he just wanted to go home to his family, and I didn't want to hear it anymore. I didn't want to listen to the hypocrisy of a druggy pill pusher saying how much he loved his family. I didn't want to hear I wasn't good enough for the pathetic man who was slurring his words and barely able to keep his head upright. So I stopped the talking. I put a knee in his gut and my hands around his neck. I pressed down until the words stopped, and then the gasping stopped, and then everything stopped. Then I ran. Then I made it back to my farm and took my dad's old tuck to truck to Dimitri's. The construction on Poplar slowed me down, but I wasn't the last one there. I hated myself for what I had done, for what Charlie had forced me to do for weeks I could barely function. The only man I had ever loved was gone. He didn't love me anymore. He won't ever love me again, but I refuse to believe he never loved me. I know what we had wasn't just in my head, it was real. It was so real I can still close my eyes and I'm right there, back in high school with him. Anything you'd like to add before I end this interview? No. There's no point. It won't bring my Charlie back. Yeah. Wow. See you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yo. Oh. We kind of did it. Oh. So, so like in the edit, you're gonna make it look like we did it, right? Yeah. Like yeah, you're gonna yeah, cut yeah, out the part it. where we emailed. No, it didn't happen. Uh, Nina's name first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us for today's Board AF and the second part of our Hunt to Killer series. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it because we had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. This was. Chaos. Robin's motive is is crazy. And also, what's wrong with his daughter? Maggie. Is yeah, Maggie's up. heart needs to be looked into. <laughs> Maggie yeah, wrong. She's obviously should be taken to therapy. having an issue watching her mother cheat yep. on her father. Maggie's gonna need a lot of therapy, mm -hmm. but that's it. That's the whole thing. Thank you so much for joining us for this very special Hunt a Killer Board AF spooky and murdery and fun. If you didn't watch part one yet, you could go and watch that. You could do it backwards if you want, and then you'll see how silly we were in the beginning when we thought it was anybody else. Totally. Like the video <laughs> if you enjoyed the series. Yeah. Subscribe.
hit that notification bell, get notified every time that we post a new video, and click one of these over here to watch more of us Ooh. doing stuff. Oh, wow. The that's stuff cool. we're doing. Oh my God. There. You see all that stuff? Yeah, that, this is stuff. That's stuff. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's more stuff. That's kind of stuff. This is oh. that's the yeah, most yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Phoenix. Bye. <laughs>